Well today we're going to take a <coughs> walk down through Dalby on this footpath which goes from the um, Glenmead Dalby Road to Glenmead River basically and um, there's lots of little things to see in the way I'll point out to you so you'll know what you, to look for in the future you can see by the army it's quite a, a brisk day Right on we go so this um, path is um, well maintained basically fairly easy to walk on as far as I can see and there's uh, lots of things to be seen in the area so I'll try and point them out as I going along and then uh, we'll stick some stuff on afterwards maybe this big beauty here is a uh, a marker stone. It's a beauty. They would use these stones in the old days. Not necessarily here, but when they'd be walking across the hills, there'd be no lights. So the only thing they'd be able to see at night would be something like these big white granite stones. And they'd stand out in the dark. If you put your hand on them, they're stone cold. <laughs> Not very interesting in the zone. But if you ever want to know what the Alamo would look like if it was never farmed, this is it. These upland fields will look like this. Nothing but bushes. So you need the sheep to keep them trimmed, the farm to keep it topped, otherwise you'll end up with a world of bushes. So you can do so much more when you're walking and talking. Well, that shed is that plantation is called Glen Russian. It's about 100 acres, it was planted in 1957. A lot of the trees didn't survive, so they've redone it again. And now they're cutting it down. Penny was out yesterday having a run around the beach. And uh, came back with a sore leg, so she slumped a little bit today. And she's done a muscle in on the back leg. So it'll be a gentle stroll today for her. I'd miss her, I didn't have her. Uh, when you've got a dog out like this, you're not actually talking to yourself, are you? Uh, somewhere along this track there is another ruin, which we view today. It's called Thalu Quain. I'm not sure you can make that little place over there in the um, snow or not. I can actually get a name to it, but on the path to it you'll have to stop and look at Castle White. A whole pile of little lazy birds outside his house in this garden. A little bit of snow adds a difference to it. And we do need this time here to kill some bugs, they tell me. I think I've had enough. My sheep are out to eating hay like it's going out of fashion. The uh, greenery green green on the ground here is rape. It'll be used for feeding the sheep and the weather gets even worse. Which it will do, I guess, up here. So the field gets ploughed up back end. September time when this is put in. And it'll keep through the winter. It's good feeding for sheep. Always do well on it. It's an easy walk to go down. A little bit more tiring going up. I was going to go down to uh, Glen May area this morning, but the road is closed. I imagine it's just because it's a bit frosty. And what's the point of being a hero? None at all. Not sure about these plantations. Craig McLock is one of them, I think, if I've got it pronounced right, and the other one is. The Largan Plantation we're going to walk through. Oh, new gates aren't out. Looks well. Looks well. It's funny. I was in um, was, uh, Malvern Hills 
with me a few years ago when she had her back the way after she got better and uh, it's a very flat place in the world, Melvin Hills as I was saying, Melvin Hills are it's the only hill for miles and we're used to all hills over here where you know you can walk for hours and see nobody and you really own them but we head up this Melvin Hills Bear in mind she had not long started walking properly and uh, couldn't believe it. Paths everywhere, thousands of people. All the paths are concreted and tarmacked and all. It was immaculate. But you know, you didn't feel like you owned it. You felt like you were sharing it. When I'm over at these paths, I always think, when I'm out, I actually own these today because there's nobody else with me. So, found it at last. This is Thalu Quain. Well built. Typical stone of the area. It's um, granite blocks cut out on the corners and slate infills. Not sure where this would be the house. Well, not really. We'll look inside. Ah, it is not the house then. Yeah, definitely not a house, there's no chimneys in this one. Mm, gable's still intact though. What a view in the world, eh? And the other gable's pretty good too. Another little part here too. Chip over the briars. Oh, Bracken's dead. It will come back to life. Doesn't die forever, does it? And that's what we're looking for. A little horse mill. I knew there'd be one attached to that cog somewhere. Right, Pen. Now. Found the easy way up from the outside. That uh, slotted metal on top would have had poles in it, probably two I think in this one. Two horses would have walked around this circle hour after hour all day. And um, that cog in there, the bottom, would have another cog run through to the inside of that shed, which was turned that big cog we saw a few minutes ago. Which is there. Oh, well, it's worth the effort of getting here. View on the world, eh? View on the world. Those mines there are called Beckwith's Mines. They were from 1831 to 1870. Probably one of the better mines around, I think. It's part of the Foxtail mine load anyway, mostly lead I believe, and in its, in its years it managed to um, sell for half a million pounds worth of lead. I'm not sure whether it's those days or value of these days, I don't know. Uh, the big chimney half it fell off a few years ago, but I've got the picture of it before it fell off. So three or, three or four hundred men would have worked up here, in the quarry as well. Down there is called Clock Bane. And it ran, ran for many years with um, Karen's farm, which is just a bit further up. That's the little chapel I was telling you about, 1930. It was abandoned, or oh, not used. It was by Beckwith Meister. And that one out there, as I say, was called the Promised Land. Kind of Mike Goldie. I'm used to fetch a stock over here from Ronig uh, sometime. Now, where that was promised, 
as in uh, biblical terms or promised in the will, you would know. Bigger ones in the big one in the tree is called Karen's Farm. Although I always think it must have been Glen Russian Farm because it's, this is a Glen Russian area, but it's nothing else called Glen Russian. Farm by Mr. Karen up to the 1930s when the whole place was sold to the water board. And the Peel water board is there's going to be a big reservoir up here. But it never came to fruition. The little place there is called Balavelle, as was the chapel down there. And um, my aunties came here from Cumbria, the Rudds. They lived down here for a while, according to my cousin. And uh, two sisters married two brothers, and they were my father's brothers, so they're my uncles. So there's the um, fellow Quinn I was telling you about. It's an overall picture of it, paths up to it. I did find a reference to a fellow Quinn in the Eye Museum, but I couldn't find much about this place. And no doubt somebody will know more about the meat. Let's hope so. Uh, this afternoon I met nice, some nice people. A few with masks on, some didn't. Makes my glasses steam up so I can't see where I'm going. But we are very lucky, aren't we? There's a finish off with a bit of a story, really. Whether it's too, I don't know. I don't know, but the farm couldn't see below the mine. It's called Balacottia Mine. And it was farmed by Cotties, I think. Well, I know it was. Uh, Mike Goldie, one of my favourite Thornton people, did a book. And one of his best friends was Gordon Cotty. Spent his life, most of his life, in a wheelchair after a bike accident. But he came from down this area. And he had a brother, John. I don't know if his sister's not, but he certainly had a brother. And um, his mother would my, be described by my mother as a scotcher. She never stopped still. So she used to walk from Balakotia up to um, Salalian Road, down Salalian Hill, to St John's to shop in Douglas every Friday. And she'd get the train into Douglas and do the shopping and come home again. Anyway, she met Mrs. Kenyuk on the way to the shop. And uh, this is the story Gordon used to tell her. His mother was always a one for a bargain, and Mrs. Kenyuk said, you must go to that shop in Douglas to sell those lavery brushes. Now, in my head, it's something like the Bonton stores, but you're probably too young to remember that. But that's the sort of shop I can imagine it would be. She said they're selling two lavery brushes for the price of one. And Mrs. Cole thought, that sounds like a bargain. I'll go and get it. So she bought the um, lavery brushes. Did the rest of the shop and came back on the train. I home put the shopping away. Next week she went into town again and she bumped into Mrs. Kenyuk and she said to her, Mrs. Kenyuk, I got those brushes, you know, like you said. Oh, and how did it go? Mrs. Kenyuk asked her, Mrs. Cotty. Well, she said, I don't really know, she said. The boys are using it for a couple of days, she said, but they've gone back to newspapers. Now, like all good stories, it could be true, couldn't it? Could, I mean, I enjoyed it anyway, hope you did. So uh, we're heading off home now. Late afternoon. This is the reverse track we came in. Been a busy footpath today. Dogs, people, runners, walkers, bikers. Good to see people out there. Nice conversation with a couple of my kiddies who are into the Thornton world, explain what they were. She's looking for volume one of my books, but I haven't been able to source one. So if you do hear of one for sale or available, let me know and I'll put in touch with you.